Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of The Connection Check. My name is GamerEdge101. I am one of the two hosts. My other host here is the Game6970, uh, also known as Shelby. Hello, world! I am Shelby Sherbert, a.k.a. The Game6970. How are you all doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> the podcast that we are doing now is something that we've been discussing for a very short time between each other i however have been discussing the idea of a podcast with another friend for quite some time but shelby brought up the idea on his own volition he had no idea we were even discussing this prior so no we opted we opted to go ahead and do this as a kind of a side project so it's not something we're planning to do super regularly but for the time being we'll do an episode maybe a month or two or every once in a while depending on yeah depending on what's going on yeah because we're like not exactly good with coming up stuff, let alone on a daily basis or a uh, weekly basis. So Yeah, coming up with stuff on the fly usually is better in a stream platform where we're making jokes and stuff, but for con uh, content to talk about, not so much. So, Which is why this will be more scarce. For this first episode, we actually wanted to take time to talk a little bit about ourselves and what we do on pr primarily YouTube. Me, I'm doing Twitch more these days. But we want to talk about a little, a lot about the creation process of the stuff we've done on our channels, and uh, just the interesting intricacies of what that entails. So, our first uh, topic that we wanted to discuss was generally give a background and the time we've spent making content. Uh, Shelby, I will allow you to go first on that one. Okay, for me, I actually um, started all the way back on. Halo um, CE for the PC, not the Master Chief Collection, which um, there were some projects I did with some people on there, but there wasn't anything really worthy of noting, but uh, one was like a parody of the Leroy Jenkins just in Spartan form, and uh, the other one was supposed to be like a multi-episode thing, and that was actually supposed to be um, where I really got to actually do something with this really shitty mic that I had at the time. And actually, <laughs> there was a lot of times where we were using shitty mics, so... Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm um, guilty of that. But <laughs> um, we probably only filmed maybe half of the one thing, which uh, was uh, titled, I believe, The Slayer Chronicles? And there was, like, seven of us. And uh, we got the intro, had no issues there. Um, got through halfway filming the first episode, and needless to say... There was problems filming that, uh, <laughs> and Zach's all too familiar with this, is uh, people fucking around way too much. In fact, to give you an idea on how badly it w people were fucking around so much, I'm not going to say I was innocent on this, but uh, I did a relatively small amount, but there were just people like, we got maybe two minutes of filming done within a week. From how many people were fucking around so much. Even Ouch. in the director himself. Yeah, it was insane. It's like, are we going to do this? There was maybe two other people that were kind of like me. Like, are are we doing this? Like, what's going on? The director would um occasionally be like, oh, well, uh, okay, guys, let's get serious. Let's get serious. Then somebody cracks a joke or something. He loses concentration and almost immediately started joining. I'm like... Alrighty then. Like, sounds, oh. sounds like the director was quite submissive, if you ask me. <laughs> it's like he got easily distracted, and it's like I understand things took long along the film, man. This is something I even had the mindset back then. Like this was coming off around the time Red versus Blue was like uh, banging or just about to blow up and stuff. So I was watching their videos, oh, yeah. and uh, just like. There's, like, a lot more to the story, but a, a major part of it was director not really seeming to care and uh, people just messing around too much. How long was and this before you'd met me? That was probably... I was probably in my second year of high school, so 10th grade. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet you until after I graduated, so that was, like, 2010. Okay. Um, but after that... Um, and, it, and ironically, we had the same director, like, moved on for a while and uh, actually made two shorts in um, Halo 3. 
One of them was just making fun of um, Hayabusa armor, which I guess at that time I don't exactly remember. <laughs> People that were tryhards when they got the Hayabusa armor. Oh, yeah. And, like, so that got made fun of. I'll actually insert the clips to that in here, like, or, or maybe not, or ones I feel like are worthwhile, but... Then there's the other this, one. Yes, the <laughs> other one. He was looking forward to that. Um... And I don't even know if I can necessarily call this a machinima. It's okay. The name of the machinima was titled Just Dance. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember um, this one very vividly. And yes. I, mean, I still oh, make fun oh, okay. of it to this day. I thought this is something you knew right on the fly, but all right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically, the premise was two teams were fighting each other. One of them gets kind of bored with this and thanks to fighting sentence. And then decides to stop all the fighting by saying, hey, everybody, let's dance. And they all start dancing. Some other person shows up. He starts <laughs> dancing with them, kills them. Everybody gets mad. Then they kill that dude and just start teabagging his corpse. Now, there's a bit more to it than this, that the concept wasn't necessarily great, but I think it was at the very least semi-decent where you could, like, like oh, okay, this, this is it. cool. Yeah, I guess kind of laugh at it, but, and I was actually, I didn't really have high expectations, but, yeah, um, you had so, more expectations than what you got. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely <laughs> for sure. So if you were, let me put it this way. If you were trying to look up something funny and you came across the video, this wasn't a term at the time, but you would feel like you, or maybe it was, but you would have felt like you got clickbaited or trolled because the fighting segment Lasted a total with, of, uh, I believe it was three minutes out of a seven-minute video. Right. And this is consecutively, and it was just cutting back and forth between both teams. You would think it was a very shitty montage. I, the only it, thing I really remember is your bit. Yes, and my bit. Oh, my God. But once <laughs> you get past all that, and this is the, I think I was actually... No, I was the only other person that had a voice in that. Everybody else was quiet. It was me and then the director himself. Um, I was the person that basically told everybody to wait, let's dance. But I, I don't know why I did it this way. And I'm ashamed I did it this way. <laughs> but I'll give you a demonstration. And then I'll even show you a clip reluctantly. Yeah. But, uh, but basically, I was like this. Wait. <laughs> I have a better idea. Let's dance. Like, and it sounded so mm. fucking bad. It's like, I'm probably not the best voice actor even now, but I am, a, I can at the very least know I have enough comps to say I am a lot better than I was there. I, I may or may not include that clip in my edit of the podcast, but we'll, we'll I see. I can send you a link. I, I know exactly how to find it, which I'm surprised it still exists because... I believe the uh, the video was like eleven years old now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's but a long I, time. I, I might put it in my edit. I might not. Mine might be more more streamlined. We'll see. Yeah, but after I saw that, I'm like, oh my god! And like, there was like some <laughs> funny moments, but like, and like, I, I actually remember a comment somebody made on it. The comments aren't there. I don't know if he re-uploaded it or whatever happened, but there was a comment I distinguishly remember. It said, that was, like, pretty much utter garbage, and the only part that was semi-funny was the part where everybody got blown up. I'm just sitting there like, yeah? Yeah. And so, as for background, this is... You, at this point, you haven't really done any creating of your own. This was all no. by proxy or just by association. No, and it's something I really wanted to do, but I can never get somebody to, like... I'm not expecting, like, things, every single thing to be serious, but serious enough to actually do it. Yeah, serious enough to get the job done, so to speak. Even yeah, if the and, like, context I, is comedy. Yeah, and, like, I even asked the director, like, bro, what was that? And he's like, I don't even know. It's like you don't know how to cut? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then after that, he tried, uh, there was like a project or two that he tried to uh, get me in. I can't remember. I think it was based off some sort of space commercial. And I'm just like, eh, <laughs> uh, I don't think so. And that actually, 
put me on a four year gap almost where I didn't do anything with cinema related. That thing all nearly broke the camel's back for me. It's oh, like, no. no. Well, and then no. you met me. There was a few people that uh, mentioned some machinima stuff, and I was like, no, nah, no. And then who was it that introduced me to you? Uh, Brendan. It was Brendan. Brendan wasn't it? Tr- was it his name Trickshot or something uh, at the time? It, it, it was DRG Huey, or it might have been Trickshot at the time. But he he was in a clan with some of, some of his other friends. And this person I actually met on Metal Gear Online too, which was back in like two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So, I don't really talk to him that much these days because he's a generally busy person, not because of anything that happened. But uh, he, he introduced me to Shelby uh, because he recruited, I, I want to say, about eight people from his clan to help me film something. Shelby was one of them, and Shelby's also the only one who stuck. <laughs> yeah, because like everybody else just like, gave up after, like, a, like, what, like an episode or just yeah, pretty anything much. in general? Yeah, everyone else was like, "No, nah, we're good." This, it was fun to try, but no one else really cared to keep going, and that's okay. It's not for everybody. But yeah, like as far as background goes, there's really nothing else as far as um that I did prior to actually start making stuff uh till then, until at least I met Zach again. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, it's like I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to you. You can go ahead and uh, talk about some of the stuff you made. All right, so I actually my background generally starts around. 2012 with my current channel now i have done stuff in the past in with real life skits and some friends but i'm not gonna go into that because they're completely <laughs> irrelevant they're completely irrelevant to the to content at uh-huh. hand, and uh-huh. they're really bad but 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 don't, that don't is where know. i started learning how to edit but i didn't really start learning how to edit videos with sony vegas until um i started game rage 101 so that's where my stuff really starts. That's where my background actually begins. So it was around 2011, 2012 when I started Game Rage 101, and I actually started putting videos together through kind of a backdoor channel type uh, thing because I didn't have a capture card when I first started the channel. I had to record the videos, upload them to a cloud, download them, and edit them. And it really? Looked, yeah, it looked really I bad. I honestly did not know you did that. Like, I figured you used some sort of software, even if it was a shitty piece of software. Well, I only had to do that for the first few videos. I got a capture card relatively quickly after that. Uh, they're probably like, oh my god, thank you. Yeah, pretty much. It was, it was a dream come true. But it was still just <laughs> a shitty little 720p capture card. And obviously, through the years, I've learned how to make video look better, I've learned how to render better, I've learned how to edit better, and I've gotten better equipment so that everything sounds and looks better, but I started out with a pretty basic 720p capture card, and I just recorded whatever the hell I felt like, so it was always, it started with Modern Warfare 3, that's the time period for anyone wondering. I would just record gameplays and edit them together, and and anything around that time I would just record, mostly friends with when I was friends with Rob. That or, or, that's around the time me and Rob were actually playing together more regularly, I should say. <clears throat> yeah. And then about two years later, around, um, I'd say that was about a year into Halo Reach's life cycle. Is that is that right? Um, I don't what, remember what, what, when I met you. Um, it was at I feel it was either 2011 or 2012. It was one of the two. So I would roughly say about it was maybe at least a year. Yeah. So. I started playing Halo Reach because I got a 360 kind of on a, off a whim and started using Halo Reach to try and film stuff, and that was the first time I'd actually filmed anything on it. And that's when my friend Brendan had been like, hey, I can get you some people. So he got Shelby, and we filmed what was called The Infection of Reach. It was a spin on a story I wrote a long time ago, and um, I won't get into the details on that one, but... The uh, infection of Reach is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first time I had actually made a machinima using a video game aside from uh, a couple I did in Modern Warfare 3, which were not anywhere near the same tone or level of editing. They were just for laughs. So that was the first time me and Shelby had done anything together. Um, after that, we also did a little short called McDick's Pizza Place. <laughs> and that actually... The the general idea of the plot for McDick's Pizza Place is actually what ended up being the plot for Clucky's Chicken for, that we Which made was amazing. with the Grand Theft Auto V. The general idea of two delivery boys delivering something 
and having shenanigans along the way. That was the ideas that carried over. <laughs> I actually have some bloopers still from Clucky's 2. Uh, or it was actually one of the funny moments I created and stuff, but... Oh, oh yeah. From Clucky's 2. <laughs> I remember the helicopter still. Yep, that's the, that's the one I'm talking about in particular. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so that's generally where my background starts, and obviously I've gone up and down. We'll talk a little bit more about the machinima stuff that we've done more recently, but... Uh, so, Shelby, tell them about your first project with me, the one that you worked on yourself for the first time. Um, the first project that I actually worked on with Zach was um, actually uh, Stalker, which uh, would later get a revise, which I'm glad I did that for various reasons. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that machinima was actually based off some things that actually happened to me to that happened to me in real life. And to an extent, I was, I was about point, to say to an extent, very uh, uh, exacerbated, but yeah, like like yeah, you could probably figure out where things really go. Like, okay, that that's not what happened in real life. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh kind of easy to write itself, really. Like for the most part, I didn't really <laughs> struggle writing that. I don't. I don't know if I helped you write any of that one. I know I've helped you with future ideas. I know you. I know you. You did. I think maybe a little bit with the revised, but not the original. Yeah, not the original. The revised. I added a few of my own players in there. One of which I remember killed you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, that was the first um project I worked on, Zach. Uh, But it was not the first project I actually ever worked on. There was something. Prior to that, that didn't involve Zach, that didn't make it onto YouTube, which he helped me with, but that basically went through a very long hiatus because there was just certain things um, that were going on with GTA that really limited us, and Zach at a point figured a way around that and had camera shots looking so much better, and here's this video that's sitting on my uh, computer, I'm looking at it, it's like, do I want to even bother? Like, Wait, what is this? This was um, Operation Zero. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I actually have two, both the original uh, video of it on my computer, and I have the final product, which everybody saw on YouTube. Right. The first one was very th- similar to how Stalker was filmed, but mm-hmm. for the most part, I will always consider Stalker the first one I actually did because it got finished and it got put up first. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I always forgot about that too, because to me, Stalker always came first. Which on YouTube and on paper, it did. But yeah, I always forget that we did Operation Zero at, before well, that. Yeah, it was when I it's when I did a bunch of reshoots. I actually went back in there and fixed a lot of the shots. Like, and they you could like if I were to put a comparison to those shots, you the difference is seriously night and day, and I'm really glad I did that because yeah, and then I also helped you with some of the camera work to figure some of that stuff out. I do remember that. Yeah, because like it it was on the verge of not showing up at all. It wasn't even titled anything. It was actually, uh, I was we were actually just coming off something Zach filmed, which was I'll let him talk about that. But it was called the drop off. So yeah. I wanted to film something actiony. So uh, yeah, let's go it, ahead it and got talk in the about. Mood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got me all want to make something cool and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I'll go ahead and let him talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the drop off. This was generally meant to be a one-off thing, and this chains into a long chain of events that makes me mad to my core. But <laughs> the beginning, the drop off was a one episode, one and done. Characters weren't even named action scene that I had just wanted to film. I wanted to give, take a shot at it and see how it looked. And for the production value we had available at the time and the knowledge we had at the time, it was generally well received. People liked it. The, oh, yeah. But this was also a good point that someone had criticized our mic abilities or our mic qualities, rather. And this was where I started taking mic quality much more seriously because this they gave me proper feedback. They didn't just go, oh, your mic sounds like shit. <laughs> they actually they actually <laughs> well, explained I mean, what the problem he'd be was. He'd right, but it, yeah, he did actually give us feedback. Yeah, but th- that was where I took the criticism seriously and went, you told me what was wrong, now I need to take the time to fix it. And from that point on, I went about mic quality in a very different way, and since then I have generally improved it tenfold in every aspect that I use microphones in. 
But that was also, that was a big point because that was where the quality of my channel also began to go up. Yeah. So. And, not, uh, not just but, visually, but audio as well. Yeah, and for the record, we're, we're not, uh, like, I, I wouldn't necessarily say either of us are still the greatest for audio, but compared to what we were then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> th there's a big difference. Um, I would actually like at some point, uh, if I can, I don't really know, but uh, make things a bit more soundproof because I feel like that would really take it up a notch and stuff and sound like it's actually coming from characters, if you know what I mean. Yeah, see, I want to do that. I'd like to do something like that, too. I've actually uh, debated moving my desk into my room and soundproofing the room more so that I can do this because right now I'm in a living room in my basement and it, it does echo a little bit, but I haven't done any voice acting really since I've gotten here where I live now, so... I haven't had much of a need for it just yet. But if the need ever arises, I might still do it. But, yeah, the drop-off, which ended up leading into the idea of us creating a series called Chaos Call. And this series was fun at the time, and now I look at it with <laughs> disdain and anger. Because of what could have been is much better than what is. <laughs> yeah. So, which this actually transitions quite well into the next topic of struggles with creation. So, I have a lot more stories on this one than Shelby does. Shelby has a few of his own as well. Yeah. But I've got a lot more of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. Okay. So, let's start off with the very first time I really struggled to make something. And that was Chaos Call Episode 3. Oh, dear Lord. Episode yeah. 2 was not that bad. I, uh, the, that was all right. <laughs> episode 2 wasn't terribly bad, but we didn't... The thing about it is, is we didn't really get the mic quality thing down until after episode 3 because we didn't get the criticism from the first episode until after I had made it. I do remember that. I can't remember when it came in exactly. It could have been a episode, episode 4 is when we started taking mic quality seriously. Oh, I, I, I believe you on there. I just don't know, remember when uh, that criticism particularly came in at what point. Oh, yeah. I just remember it was after episode 3 because that was when I took it seriously was 4. Because if you watch episode 1, 2, and 3, the mic qualities are all over the fucking place. They're loud. They're, you know, doing whatever they want instead of what we want. <laughs> yeah. So... But episode two for Chaos Call, honestly, that wasn't that hard to film. It was cheesy, it was dumb, it was stupid, but it wasn't hard to film. Episode three became a bigger problem because I started trying to take the story a little more seriously. I started trying to write a little bit better. And there was a lot of uh, moving shots in that that lended itself to having trouble with the way Rockstar editors worked. Now, at the time, I didn't have the experience with the Rockstar editor, so that was the first struggles with creation was learning how to use that properly. Did we have the open camera mod at that point yet? No, I feel I, uh -uh. I don't know if we did or didn't. I didn't start using open camera mods until episode four, and you definitely didn't start using it until after that. Yeah, I know I definitely used it after you. I just couldn't remember when exactly you started using it. But so, generally the struggles first came with the editing process of the Rockstar Editor because the cameras like to do weird things when you blend them together sometimes. And I didn't know this at the time. And I didn't know how to fix it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the shots in episode 3 look really freaking weird and then there was the way I tried to warp my own voice to play another character and nowadays I do it much better but the first time I tried doing it it sucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah the thing is though um, was this a 3 no, no that was 4 I'm getting ahead of myself continue <laughs> okay episode 3 was when the character of Darks actually started talking more yeah and that was when I actually really tried to make him sound different, but you could tell it was just me doing a voice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to an extent, even in episode four, you can still tell, but I did a better job of giving him his own flair. But even though episode four is its own fucking mess, and we'll get there. But <laughs> <laughs> episode three, most of the issues were editing and recording issues. Not so much anything in-game, but just rather my own incompetence with the editor. Episode four, on the other hand, holy shit. Um, I don't actually know where to start with this one. Uh, I, uh, how about with the plane? How about that? Yeah, let's sure, start let's there. start with the plane. And this is probably where I'm going to start showing stuff from these episodes to show what I'm fucking talking about. Uh, I'll probably even put them on my end as well. <laughs> so the plane. Cool idea. Very bad execution. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, hey, here we go. Expect expect laughter. A lot of laughter. I'm gonna try to. <coughs> I'm gonna try to edit out my coughing because I am currently re- kind of like sickish. But so episode four starts with a plane crashing into a bridge with a bunch of cars, and the effect of it actually happening is actually kind of cool when it does happen. But the build up to it is weird. The camera shots are weird. The main villain's all quoting George Washington for some fucking reason, <laughs> which that in itself isn't the worst part about it. It's just that he's standing on top of the bridge the plane crashes into. Who the fuck would do that? <laughs> 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 I, I, I've even mentioned that if I would do, I would recreate the scene, if I were to do it today, he would be in a car at a distance watching this happen and just quoting it to the person beside him. Yeah, that would have definitely uh, that would have had a heavier been effect. a big improvement. Yeah, that would have had a heavier effect, in my opinion, too, because he's shouting at a bunch of people that are about to die. What difference does it make? Well, technically, he he should be dead. Wiffle. Oh, he should absolutely be dead too. The plane crashed right fucking behind him, <laughs> and he's just sitting there going, "Hey, hey, hey I'm evil." <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, let's talk a little bit about Isha's voice acting. He's very monotone. He doesn't quite. Uh, Lift Preston up to the evil I want. Oh, I love it. It, it. it makes it funny in its own way, though. Now, as Billy, he nails it. Oh, yeah, no doubt about as that. As Billy, that is 100% perfect. As Preston, not so much. <laughs> but if I'm going to criticize Ish's voice acting, I can at least criticize my own as well. Oh, God. Let's talk. Uh-huh. Let's talk about it. Uh, episode four was probably my best voice acting, admittedly, and then episode two and three, where I was overacting every little thing. <laughs> oh, uh, episode two, not so much because I wasn't even in episode two. That's right. No, you weren't. Uh, you were like missing or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I was not there. Let's just go with that. Well, you, no, no, no. You were there in the beginning, but then oh, after yeah, that. I was there in the beginning, and that the overacting on that one made more sense. Yeah, but, but uh, and then we also have your voice acting in episode two, which was glorious, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. I tried so hard. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we've also struggled with getting better at voice acting. Now, obviously, since we've leaned more towards comedy, that's been less of an issue because goofiness kind of just comes with the territory. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, for Chaos Call episode four, editing that was a fucking nightmare. Because I had a lot of shots at different angles that did not blend together, that did not work together. They were segmented puzzle pieces with no proper fit. So when editing them together in Sony Vegas, finally, there was a lot of shots that would cut abruptly, shift angles abruptly, do weird fucking things abruptly. There was a bit with the car crashing and getting blown up as a motorcycle drove, drove by it. And I was trying to get them to shoot the driver on a motorcycle over and over again. And then upon finishing that scene, I realized there was about 80 easier ways I could have done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, re- I remember, like, there was this one scene that you wanted with the uh, motorcycles. And it was going around a corner. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, that is the one you're talking about? Okay. Because yeah. there was a few different parts with the motorcycle, so I wasn't sure which one. <laughs> yeah, but that was, that was the one that was really hard to film. Yeah, okay. That, and that was the one where I'm like, I absolutely could could have done that in so many better ways. So, yeah, because like, wind up what happened most of the time anyway. I was just crashing into a damn wall and flying off into yeah, the because, distance. Yeah, because we were trying to make them hit a sharp turn and shoot the car at the same time. Or something like that. And it just really wasn't working. And it was frustrating everybody, including myself. So, we got it. And let me tell you, in the final product, it looks like garbage. <laughs> like, you'll see that scene and go, wait, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> so, and and then the, the, the motorcycle chase goes around and through these houses. And the, the idea, I, think, I still like the idea of where this went down. But then uh, Preston kind of just weaves and Lucas gets hit by a car. Then he's like, re... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Uh, Lucas being my character, by the way. There was a few good ideas in episode four, but the editing was atrocious. You can tell it was a train wreck to make, and I haven't made another episode of Chaos Call since. I've tried, and I failed. (laughs) 
now that will go into another struggling uh, conversation. But for now, let me I'm gonna let Shelby take over some of his struggles. Um, really, for me, it was like um again. Um, this is actually something both we had um happened to us is like. Getting people to cooperate and stuff with GTA Online and stuff like that. Um, people just messing around too much. Can't get anything done. Like, hey, now we did get them to listen after a couple of times. So it wasn't as bad as some of the stuff I dealt with that and things that didn't involve me. But for things that did, that was definitely one of them. And uh, um, I'm, I'm also have a struggle when it comes to picking particular shots. Like I, I mean, I get really picky at times. So, um, like I want to shot in a very specific way. Zach will be watching me edit it and be like, Hey, Shelby, don't you do this way? But no, I like, I, I, I want to do it this way. It's like, it'd be so much easier. It's like, Zach, stop it. I want to do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, um, like, yeah, I don't have anything quite extravagant like Zach with the camera things like that. The only one I think I could probably compare it, it to really would probably be um, Stalker, the, the original Stalker. Um, yeah, I had some, and it, it's excusable because it was like my first one. So, um, yeah, like there's a scene with um that I remember off the top of my head. It was when Blake, which that's who I do, and I also voice Blake and stuff he does and he does stuff with Mike on my stuff we, we share both these guy characters so yeah effectively um but there's a shot uh where Blake is running away from Jess Jesse or Jessica mm-hmm. he gets in in his car and you I'm trying to keep the camera as close as I can within the limit of getting Jess following him. And, and a lot of times she just kept disappearing out of shot or the camera would tell me, <laughs> hey, you reached your limit. I'm like, you fucker. And also the uh, issue I had was I had a lot of more mid to wide shots and not nearly enough uh, close-up shots. Like, I'm not talking extreme close-up, just close-ups in general. Yeah. And, uh, but that was kind of uh, fun to edit. And then... Um, another thing I could think of that, um, I ain't exactly entirely proud of is actually the second episode of, uh, Operation Zero, which the camera work was okay and stuff, but that time I think I actually, we did have the open camera mod. Yeah, I I do Uh, remember you actually needing it for a few shots. Um, but... There, there was just, it was more so with the way I had things written and in the flow with scenes and stuff. And I'm like, oh, God, I wish, why did I have them say this or do that? <laughs> like, uh, there's a, like, because at the end of the first Operation Zero, he escapes this very bad situation. Well, he doesn't escape, he gets caught, but he gets rid of something very important. And the way when I'm explaining it, it's like, oh, yeah, um, like... Yeah, I'm telling my boy Reese that uh, that like I tossed the evidence over a bridge and stuff, and there's like a thousand cops on me, and net somehow nobody fucking saw me do that, even though it doesn't <laughs> even show it on camera. And I'm just staring at that's like, I could have just said it got captured or something. I feel like there's something I could have came up with better. And it's like, oh, they can't find it. So, and then it transitions into later on. Um, which, um, my character's name was different in this. It wasn't, um, Blake and his wasn't Mike. His name was Reese and Mm. mine was, uh, what the fuck was my name? I don't Uh, even remember what your fucking name was, to be honest. I think it was, I want to think it was Chris. Was it Chris? I I think it was Chris. I actually don't remember. Uh, I I don't know. I'll have to look, but, Which uh, which I guess shows a lot. (laughs) Yeah. I guess I'm not proud of that one particularly, but then it, it, it transitions. Transitions in toward the end where Reese is in the submarine going to look for this very small object. <laughs> like, and I, I, I think I pulled, I pulled a cop out. Like, oh, it's uh generating a signal. Which <clears throat> you're a military base, anybody could pick that up. Yeah. But somehow only Reese can find it. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be Mr. Ponytail. Yeah, it's like I'm like oh. <laughs> I would rewrite that a bit differently and like and um the other thing I could think of that will struggle for me was actually with Wildcats. I'm um, something more recent. Oh yeah. 
Um, with that, from first off, I've said this a thousand times to everybody else. I announced that way too fucking early. Yeah, I didn't. I like the way I presented it. It looked like it was going to be some sort of DC thing. Like I, I don't have the tasers for it anymore. But he was standing on top of a crane, looking over the city, and, and, and not, like and I was saying some bullshit. I don't remember what it was, but and then like I think I was helping something with you around the same time. I, I don't remember, but I, I don't remember either. If anything, it was probably Clucky's or or Freedom Fighters Two, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember, but uh, I didn't even have a paragraph. It was just kind of an idea, very loose idea. Yeah, and uh, I didn't release a few teasers after that. And uh, I actually remember re- going back and rewriting a lot of things and stuff. I constantly did that, like because if I was gonna do this, I am not gonna put up something shitty like I did in the past or <laughs> so. And yeah. It's like, and also, um, I think I was also a bit cocky. I guess that's the right word to use for this thing, uh, what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everything didn't go quite as a plan, but for the most part, I think it turned out decently in the end result. But uh, it took me almost a year before that finally came out. Was, was I remember the first the, Wildcat? The first Wildcat, yes. Okay. Um, the second, the second one. I, there is a second one that I did start writing, but it, it has it. It's just been sitting there. Like I got it's maybe, yeah. It's, I maybe got like a little bit over half the first act written. And that's about it. But mm. there was also a few scenes where the one in particular was a uh, one where um, Blake was in his his wild mobile, <laughs> and then uh, Mike was in. Um, discount batman mobile yeah that was great yeah it was great and the shot was basically me going down the street and he's shooting at me through the cannons for the gun from the uh mobile which was awesome and like i probably refilmed that particular scene three to four times yep mainly because i didn't i didn't feel like i had enough road and eventually i did figure out exactly how i wanted to do it but that that irritated me the most, and that actually started discouraging me there, right there. Oh my god! It's like I actually got, I actually did get a little depressed because I really wanted to get this thing out. I've been talking about it forever, and I'm just <laughs> struggling with it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? To to capitalize on your discouragement at the moment, I want to talk about my uh, idea, wonderful idea, oh, best idea I've ever had to start using mods. Okay, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, go ahead and take this away. <laughs> so, the idea was sound, and I got it to work for quite a few things. And uh, oh boy, th- this starts a rabbit hole a little bit. So, I'm going to explain what happened here. I very briefly touch on it on the uh, next Halo Machinima that we're working on, that I'm working on rather. At the very beginning of that video, you will see what I'm talking about. I might even go ahead and put the pictures I have on screen right now because this will <laughs> likely come out before then anyway. But you'll get yeah. my full you'll get my full one minute rant in the beginning of that anyway. <clears throat> but here's what essentially happened: I started using mods, and th- I've had this problem before where sometimes with the uh, Rockstar editor, you would go into a clip to edit it, and the character's mouth or eyes would be all wonky and misshapen and they wouldn't be proper. And this was affecting the recording process because they wouldn't fix themselves throughout the clip. And this didn't always happen, and I don't know whatever caused it to happen. Like, I actually managed to film a a machinima without it happening once with my mods, so I don't think it was the mods that caused it. However, the idea with the mods... I wanted to film Chaos Call with. This was originally going to be a reboot of the series starting from episode 2 because we had already rebooted episode 1 and we were happy with where it stood. Yeah. So, and I still to this day am. But we were trying to film episode 2, or rather at least I was, and I had gotten to a point of about halfway through the episode filming, and I never actually even told you about this. I didn't know. I figured you were still at the beginning. Nope. I had filmed the beginning, and then I had gotten through halfway of episode two. And at that point in time, 
I had gone into the Rockstar editor only to find that over half of my clips had this problem. I you didn't notice it prior, or did you not look at them, or what was, what was that about? They weren't there the first time I looked at them. It didn't happen until the second time I went to go edit them, and then I could never get it fixed again. Wow. Okay, so, yeah, I didn't know that at all. So, Holy shit. So let's talk a little bit about about the depression that caused I spent the next three or four days doing everything in my power to fix that problem. I had even gone as far as removing the actual recording files from Rockstar's uh, save files, moving them into another folder, moving them onto another hard drive, and moving them back. And it did yeah, not fix the problem. I, I don't recall you even telling me that. <laughs> uh, nope. I, I never told anybody that. <laughs> I never told anybody that. Well, I obviously, like, I was the, really, uh, the only people you could tell was either me, Ish, or even Rob, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, because I was so desperate to fix this, I was like, if I can find one way to fix this problem, I can finish the series. Because the mods were working, they were doing what I needed them to do. I even managed to get the shot of Blake flipping the fucking table, and the dude storming really? into the building. I was so fucking mad when Blake flipped the table and his mouth looked like he had a mouthful of peanut butter. <laughs> I'm not trying to it's, no, no, you. It's, it's funny now that I think back and look at it. <laughs> Holy shit, that was really funny. But <laughs> at the time, at the time that that sent me downward, let me just say. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, at the time that sent me downward into quite the deep level of depression because I was like, look, I really, really want to do this. And I couldn't use any of that footage. I, do, I don't have it anymore, mind you. I deleted it, but I tried for four days to fix it and nothing I did worked. There was one time I got the clip to actually reset on like the third day. but And then as I started to fast forward, I realized that it wasn't fixed and then it just kind of flipped back into what it was. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, it looked fixed at first. And then I got a close-up, and he was doing this stupid smirk, and then it was all twitchy, and the mouth movement wasn't registering properly. Ugh, excuse me. But, uh, that discouraged me to a very, very deep degree, and I haven't tried to film on GTA in a serious manner since then. The last thing I did on GTA was the short called uh, Culmination of the Multiverse, which actually turned out quite well. But even then, I did have problems with the mouth thing on that. I just managed to either hide them or get the clips without it happening somehow. There's one clip where you can actually see it happening when uh, Dyke goes up behind Mike and he's like, I want to pull that ponytail. It's actually happening to Mike's face a little bit. <laughs> but, but because it made sense to the context that he'd be all twitchy and jumpy, it was perfect. It worked. <laughs> well there you go <laughs> that was one instance of it working <laughs> so in that case I just said okay that's fine I'll let that one fly and then I tried to film the opening for the next mission that we're making now on GTA and instead of getting a proper opening you're getting a rant so <laughs> how far were you into that by the way I know you, I know God showed up but after that like, I don't know if you did anything else well I got everything, the god showing up, and then I did the, the finger snap, and then that was it. Because that was all it was going to contain anyway. Yeah, okay, so you pretty much had I, the whole I, I did the whole. Then. I did the whole thing, but everybody's mouth was fucked up. Now, I want to let everybody know, like, because he's, he's told me this has uh, even occasionally happened um, outside of mods. However, the ones I saw in mod, the mod uh, of that episode of Reach that he's making, mm -hmm. that's probably the worst I've ever seen it been. Oh, yeah. and It's like, I've seen, he's sent me stuff before, or, or I've seen stuff where they look funny, but that, that was like, oh, my God. It's like, holy I shit. I remember it happening one time in Chaos Call Episode 4, but it fixed itself really quick. Like... I don't know if I've necessarily ever really ran into that problem. The worst thing I think, if I did run into it, it, it corrected itself without me knowing. But uh, if I knew a um, way to fix it, and like if I knew what was causing it, I would stop doing whatever's causing it. And if I knew a way to fix it, I would fix it, and I'd be able to make chaos call again. Because that was the that was the one thing that killed everything for me. I would absolutely go back and do it again if I could just avoid. If I had a surefire way to avoid that happening. 
Because Chaos Call, the qual. Let me put it to you this way, Shelby. Aside from the mouth thing, that was actually coming along really good, and I'm so fucking mad about that. Uh, I I remembered a little of the the video that you put up on your channel talking about and stuff. Oh yeah, and the way where Blake was walking through the hospital. Yeah, that was nothing. Yeah, that 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 was was really nothing. Well, even I could already tell though with that just alone, it's like, oh wow. Yeah, you Shelby, that was was, that was fucking nothing. You didn't see half the shit I got to do. I. (laughs) <laughs> so let me tell you what all I had filmed. I had filmed the beginning with the cop cars coming and picking Lucas up. So because in the original you didn't even see that, right? Yeah. So the, what I had filmed was the beginning where uh, Lucas and Chris run away. They talk a little bit. Lucas is like, "Hey, get the fuck out of here!" And Chris is like, "Okay," and then he runs away like a little bitch. Uh, but then I actually got a shot of Lucas throwing his gun down, having the animation of him sighing, and then he walks out with his hands up and gets on his knees. And there's a quick, there's a close up of him kind of just watching as the, as you can see the lights from the cops reflecting all around him, and he's just like, huh. <laughs> oh, it was a good shot, and then that transitioned into, into the new opening. That shot worked, Man. but then I didn't. I, I, I didn't wish film. I could have seen that. Afterwards, I didn't film in sequence. I filmed the. That was when I started filming your little table flip scene instead. Okay. So that was difficult. I, I decided to film in terms of dip, difficulty order first. That scene with Preston in the apartment was what I was figuring was going to be the hardest one. So what I had to do was effectively get six or so of the soldiers, and I had to give them all separate animations for going into the room. And then yeah, I, I remember I remember watching a bit of that process too. Yeah. So, but what I had to do was I wanted them to throw a uh, flashbang or something like that. But the game doesn't have flashbangs, so yeah. I I just had to makeshift one. But so I had them throw something. I don't remember what the fuck it was. But because I couldn't figure out how to get them to actually throw stuff, I had them do the animation. I didn't show them throw it, uh, and I was invisible standing behind them as the animations ran out, and I threw something myself. Okay. So, kind of cool. but that took me five hours to do just that one shot. <laughs> well, you, you knew mods were definitely going to take a lot longer. I, so. I was prepared for that. And in the moment when I had filmed the shot, I was happy with it. I didn't, I didn't even need you flipping the table in that same shot. So you weren't, the, your character and stuff wasn't even in the room in that particular instance. Yeah. Cause I just needed the shot of them busting the door open, which I was actually also able to do by the way. I was able to have them shotgun the door off of its hinges. <laughs> and the, the, the I, I door flew wanna... off and like rolled around on the on the ground. And then I had a cut of you flipping the table and diving for cover up against the pillar. And Preston was all like backed up against the wall with a gun out. <laughs> I, I just want to keep in mind, like I actually never got the chance to use any of the mods. Like the most mod thing I used was probably open camera mod and yeah I really and like the last thing I made I didn't actually even use really the camera mod at all that was in wildcat which Mm -hmm. I was happy I managed to finish that but I'm afraid to use mods just because the severity of it might fuck up whatever is keeping my shit together to such a degree where Mm -hmm. I can't even do anything anymore see I didn't have that like I want to say that if you don't haven't had that mouth problem before maybe you wouldn't have it with mods so you could actually get lucky. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a unique case where it's like because yeah, I looked I, up I situations or I looked up ways to fix this and I couldn't find any. Uh, but then I also uh, I also filmed the scene where they got outside and he was holding Preston, where your character was holding Preston at gunpoint, interrogating him. And that was a, that was all I had done. But well, I I want actually- I want to say of edited footage I had about seven minutes of footage. I think the original was like maybe like what, I I can't remember how long the original uh, original episode two was. It was about twelve minutes. Yeah, I, I, that sounds about the right. The new one was going to be about twenty, because we added a whole nother scene to it and we removed one entirely. Yeah, and some of the stuff that we're talking about um, also kind of ties in with the uh, motivation to finish. Zach's is, a, is more severe than mine are, but yeah. Which, I, 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 we haven't talked about our writing processes at all either, but I think for the moment we might just skip over that. Yeah, because that can kind of tie in. That kind of ties into everything we've been talking about already, anyway. Yeah, 
but we, we might go into more detail on that in a moment. We'll see. But for motivations to finish, let me tell you, I had all the motivation until that happened. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. I'm so fucking mad at this. <laughs> yeah, for me, the only thing that uh, never really got finished was the Operation Zero series, which I don't even know how long I was planning to make that. That was also had... part of my problem with Chaos Call was I didn't know at the time how long I wanted it to be. Like, I had ideas uh, for how I wanted it to end, and uh, it was just kind of filling in the gap in between stuff to get a really clear idea and stuff. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's really the only thing on my channel that I don't think I finished. I finished everything else, but the motivation thing, like, uh, kind of varies all over the place. Some I already mentioned, uh, and another thing, um, which affects us both is just work and life in general sometimes. Just, like, because that can be really draining. Like, for uh, one video, uh, I'll use mine as an example for Wildcats. Like, aside of being nine months in total, I probably spent well over 40 hours yeah. making that. Yeah. And it gets really tiring. I don't have nobody to edit this shit for me. I mean, I occasionally can have Zach help me with a shot or yeah, something couple, like that uh, and vice versa like a shot that required that that turns his in-game recording camera off like i'll help him with stuff like that he'll do the same for me sometimes yeah but it's just crazy how long some st uh stuff can take and we just need a break again we don't have nobody that really help us with this mm -mm. Like, people like Markiplier and stuff have people that can help with his editing and things like that. Yes, because they, they have the money to hire editors. So That too. Whereas YouTube for us is little more than a hobby. So Yeah, and uh, that's also one of the reasons, uh, like, all the stuff as far as playthroughs go, it takes me forever to finish them. is because I have to go through everything and make sure everything's working properly and then edit it out and then... Keep things in and yeah, but I'm slowly trying to fix that. It's still gonna take me a while, but I have recently finished some stuff <laughs> on my channel as far as games go. So yeah, I also had a few playthroughs running from last year, not last year, the year before Dead Space Three in particular, and then I had moved to Colorado and my internet was shit there, and I couldn't upload videos. It would have because me and Shelby finished playing Dead Space Three, but he recorded it and I didn't. So his yeah, the, yeah. the playthrough of Dead Space 3 was finished, but I couldn't record it because it would have taken me uh, a month to upload one episode. So, Yeah, and the last four recordings on my end were fucked up due to uh, me not triple-checking uh, my volume on that because... I kept telling the you the game was too fucking loud. <laughs> and here's, here's the thing, it didn't sound loud through my headphones. Oh, I know, but I kept telling you, I, I did keep telling you, and you know damn well that I did. <laughs> I know you did a few times, but like I figured since it was fine for the headphones, it maybe it wasn't going to be that bad. And holy shit, did it remind me of the freaking old days where it's, it's slightly better, but it's still pretty bad where I would have to make key points on the track mm -hmm. and go down, up, down, up, constantly adjusting the line, so, trying to make it so you could hear Zach. Because I have my own audio track. Yep. I don't know how to make a, his own third individual track because if that was the case then i would have no problems whatsoever regardless of what the game volume was yep and nowadays because... we have obs to actually watch the levels yeah so we can usually get a better idea we can do a quick test i'll be like hey say something he'll say something i'll shoot a gun in the game to see how loud it is to see if it overtakes him and as long yeah, as it's and that's not something i that's something i neglected to do on those last four parts is check the goddamn volume between your voice and the game <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> if I had recorded it, this would have been much less of an issue. But I wouldn't oh. have been able to do anything with those recordings forever anyway. While I was in yeah. Colorado, my channel took what I would consider to be a very considerable dip in uh, content output. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I only uploaded maybe one or two videos the entire year I was in Colorado. So, yay. Yeah, that was uh, kind of a rough time for him. <laughs> Uh, that's putting it mildly, but I'm not even going to get into oh, that right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even, That's not even what this is about. So for now, uh, motivations to finish, they vary depending on project to project. Now, obviously, yeah. 
with projects that we film without mods, without complicated writing, and without complicated camera work, the motivation is usually much higher because it's much easier to make. Now, that sounds simple. Oh, it's easier to do. So no shit, it's easier to make. But <laughs> yeah, the process of creation is not something to scoff at, in my opinion. And having done it, I respect things like filmmaking, actual filmmaking, much more than I used to. Let me just put it that way. Yeah. Because the amount of work we put into just making short little shitty internet videos <laughs> pales in comparison to even homemade videos. I can give you a prime example. Fucking Doctor Strange and how trippy that film was. The amount of special effects artists I... In and just in general, I saw in the credits was staggering. Yeah, I'm just watching like holy shit. <laughs> like, oh. uh, uh, yep, that's their souls. Yeah, it, it really puts into perspective that type of stuff. Now, granted, those are all also AAA budget films, and we're over here with our yeah. mouse and keyboards going. I make videos, <laughs> but <laughs> the point remains the same: is that the creative process, no matter what you do is something that I generally think should be respected to some degree because people you have to, it's something you absolutely have to learn. You will not be good at as you start. Oh and, yeah. Baby steps. Take baby steps. And I, I, I know some people who think they'd be great at it right off the fucking rip. And I'm like, no, you really, you really <laughs> You're fucking cute. wouldn't. <laughs> you really fucking wouldn't. <laughs> but so let's, uh, let's, come, let's get on to a little more fun topic. Shall we? Yeah. Voice acting. <laughs> I mean, we kind of touched on this a little bit, well, but uh, not, we didn't really get into the the quirks of it. Yeah, <laughs> the the fun bits. Uh, <laughs> so, voice acting, and I use quotations. I'm using air quotes. Obviously, you can't see that. Yeah, voice acting. So, Shelby, let's start with cast call episode two. <laughs> oh, with my my <laughs> voice acting. Yeah. <laughs> It's the, like, no, oh, the, okay, I kind of remember some aspects. I'm I, like, I'm like thinking and I stuff. I also do want to emphasize that this is also partly due to direction issues from me. Yeah. But his his voice acting was hilarious. <laughs> uh, like, I could actually, um, it took me a minute to think about it, but uh, the part that stands out to me is kind of like after the whole thing with uh, the cops and everything. I don't think that part I was necessarily all that bad when I did. It was definitely not great, but I still don't think that was the bad. The <laughs> part was coming after and stuff when I was getting um, information from this guy, the locating uh, Zach's character. Like, I sound... You sound bored. I, bored? Yeah, I guess that would be the correct word to say it. It's like, like you'd be like, okay, um, there, there, there's this place over here. It's like, okay, you let me do my job, I'll do let you do yours. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna head there. You, it is like, do you see it in your display and stuff? All the information I'm sending you. I'm like, yeah, I see that. Is this good intel. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like it's weird for me to say that, like in that tone and stuff. Well, it, if, obviously, if you were telling me to do it purposely, it doesn't make me feel weird. But doing it like in the way I'm doing it now, it's like that doesn't I, feel right. I, I can't imagine doing it like that nowadays. Yeah, we we have gone through a very uh, uh, we've gone through so many ups and downs with voice acting that it's been such a it's actually been fun to learn how to do things yeah. better. <laughs> Let me just put it that way, and learning from our old mistakes. And for me, I'm gonna go back to the infection of reach. <laughs> for my, oh, yeah, for yeah, my, I had like uh, bad. Voice I had like acting. one voice line in that. <laughs> yeah, your voice, your voice line was a uh, Max. You Max, can't keep... this is dangerous. You can't keep hiding stuff from us. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, <laughs> and then I hit you and I yelled at you and I'm like, you know, you wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for me. <laughs> that's so serious. Zach. It was so stupid and so bad. <laughs> And my mic was peaking and everything. Oh, and mine was too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of interesting struggles uh, with voice acting. And I wouldn't really say struggles, but fun shifting them. The One of the things, uh, this is a mixture of acting and stuff actually happening, but it was the third episode of Chaos Call, Zach. It was when you were escaping the airport. There was nobody around you stopping you aside yeah, from those guards. Yeah. And he, he's driving down to the extraction where Preston is. And he's all like, 
<laughs> like uh, this is actually a mixture of him and it. He, yeah. He's like it's just all like, hey, get in the plane, gotta hurry. And there's like I'm coming. And he gets flipped over by just a random truck. Yeah, I get hit by a random truck, and then I get out of the truck. I'm like, huh, weird. And then I start running towards the plane, and it's just like, <laughs> look, it's get the plane, and he's slowly driving it around the corner. Yeah, and then it slowly takes off, and then <laughs> and then he's sounding so serious, and I'm just. That that particular scene <laughs> kills me every time. Yeah, at the time I'm like, yeah, action, running fast, plane coming out. It started off okay, but then it's like, oh, where is everybody? And now I'm like, why shouldn't he be like getting shot at or something? <laughs> you didn't even have one guy. <laughs> no, the one dude. I'm, I'm like, well, I guess the one dude who hit me died. <laughs> <laughs> I think you actually had that. Uh, truck drive up a ramp that you placed, and you managed yeah. to hide with the camera. Yep. And then, um, and then, uh, the other thing is a large part as to why weird shit like that happened was because we had no body actors. Yeah, we had very. Like, I'm pr- I'm like ninety percent sure that the dude who hit me in the truck was the same person driving the plane. More than likely, because <laughs> I don't even think you were available at that point. Yeah, if you were, you were either playing with the, you were either body acting as Darks or playing as the soldier that I shot in the face. Yeah, probably. And those were the only two people I had for that whole fucking episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the acting was like so stupid. It was so <laughs> what was bad. going on? Also, it also happened in two. Two is like Chris in a helicopter. Oh, and then he just crashes it into a fence. <laughs> yeah, and I and I don't even say anything. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, also, uh, mm-hmm. Shelby, how's the? Uh, oh shit! Oh yeah, that was in what? That, that was, was in three. That was in three. That was in three. Uh, yeah, so needed like an extra voice actor, um, for just a very small part for one of the guards, and uh, it was basically giving him a location of something. I don't even remember what the fuck it was to be honest. With it you. was like yeah, the data was like in a. It was like some sort of data that uh, Mike was uh, uh, looking for and stuff. And then you're interrogating him. I'm just standing there like, oh shit. Yo, yeah, no, I shot the dude right in front of you, and then I killed yeah. you up, and he goes, oh shit, and drops his gun. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> It's on the satellite on the roof. And then My I hit him. So and then I hit him in the face and I go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you totally couldn't tell that was me, right? It's like, no, no, not at all. It there were some things I've, like, there was some actual, one thing I do think I did a pretty good job of doing and, and the first episode of Operation Zero in terms of masking my voice. There was like an AI vehicle. That I uh, had my character hacked and bring it to this base to help get him out of there. Oh, I yeah. think for the most part, right. I actually managed to uh, mask my voice in because it was supposed to sound robotic-y and everything like that. And, and unless worked. you knew it was me doing it, you ain't going to know it was actually me. Yeah, and that, that one was actually pretty good. I do remember that one. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I do, I, the one thing that I wish that you could have done was that Skyrim Machinima, The Legend of Architect. Yeah, because that... The, 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 the little tease trailer I made for that was actually pretty good. I actually still like that. Yeah, it's like, and nobody could tell, like, what I was doing on that either. And there was a few parts that you sounded different, too. I'm like, wait, was that it was you? It was because I what I did was, uh, the way I would describe what I did with my voice was effectively what I did with Darks. Where, yeah. where I go a little lower like this. Yeah, except you didn't have yours all modulated and stuff. Yeah, it, it, was, it was that, but it wasn't all modulated. So that that was me effectively doing my lower, more uh, uh, gruff, and, <laughs> uh, I'm dummy thick. <laughs> that, that, that's my uh, that's my tough guy voice. Yeah, <laughs> you're tough guy. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially what dark sounds like without the voice modulation. Pretty much. And, and I remember you were like, "Dude, that was good." <laughs> and it I'm was like, good. And I was like. like too bad I never took off. <laughs> <laughs> that was the kind of thing that made me wonder a little bit. I'm like, should I start voicing characters like that a little bit more? And I never did it after that, but except for Darks, I guess, but that's a unique case as well. But mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. That's still something I still kind of toy with. I'm like, would I give a character that voice nowadays? Maybe I would just have to practice with it a little bit more. But yeah. <clears throat> otherwise, 
it was fun to do. And, and that's actually another thing is trying, trying out different ranges. My range is poor. I have two ranges, my normal oh, voice and oh, that voice. I, I could give you another example. I, I almost forgot about it. Almost slipped my mind. This goes back to his, uh, <clears throat> his little McDick's pizza place. <laughs> like, <laughs> he already knows what I'm about to go into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you've seen Clucky's, you know the scene where um, Mike and Blake crash into a fan after looking at a chick. Well, same concept, but in Reach. Instead, though, um, in Clucky's, we get out of the car to talk to each other. There's something different that unfolds in um, McDick's Pizza Place. Yeah. We crash, we get into a fight... The girl comes over, and there's a bystander that comes over. I guess you could say he's a cop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like this. It's the greatest thing ever. Oh, excuse me. This lady told me that you would hit her freaking car. What's wrong with you? Do you not know how to fucking drive? Yeah, oh, my it, God. It, it did sound like I was talking to a cop, didn't it? <laughs> you had your hands over your mouth. <laughs> yeah, because I was trying to do the helmet sound and mask my voice in weird ways. This was That was like 2013, so... That was a long oh, that time ago. was great. That, but then he gets hit with a golf club, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my nine iron and go to town on your faces. I never had any of that really on my end. That's all happened on his. Yeah. I can't think of one ep- one instant where that, um, that happened. My, my voice acting has been more uh, all over the place compared to Shelby's. <laughs> because I also voiced the McDicks dude and he was like, I don't understand. <laughs> oh yeah, you did that too. <laughs> I did do that too, yes. And and then and then in the uh, uh you know what, never mind, I'm actually not gonna mention that. But <laughs> Oh, I'm about to ask you what that is then. <laughs> uh you you already know it involves the new machinima. The, oh, oh is yeah, you, okay. You doing a voice. Okay. <laughs> but uh yeah, so as far as voice acting goes, we've had a lot of interesting ups and downs. More me because I've done, I've tried expanding my range a little bit and it fa- it's not good. <laughs> like I said, I've got two ranges. I've got my normal voice, which I can mic up as much as I want to where I can be like hee hee. And, <laughs> and then I've got that lower voice which I really only ever gave to one character and it was only out of an attempt to make him sound different. I've never actually tried doing that as an actual acting tone. Yeah, which I I, sh- I should at some point to see how it sounds, but for the time being, I, it is what it is, and I also won't try to do it when I'm sick, like right now. <laughs> yeah, but as far as voice acting, I don't think there's really anything else that I can think of at the moment. No, that not particularly. Hands out. No, but voice acting, it's fun. We're bad at it, but it's still fun. Yeah. As for the next thing we had in mind, this is actually something that was a little more prevalent to, with Shelby. Uh, a little bit with me because of some recency, but rebranding. So uh, I'll get mine out of the way first. The only rebranding I've actually done was a change of uh, logos and updated art and stuff like that. But I've also rebranded my Twitch channel. It used to be the Game Rage 101. It is now yeah. it now just rebranded as the Rage Roni Show, which is my live stream name now. Which this is. The only real difference is now I'm trying to make it more as an official show slash podcast style commentary when we're playing video games together, which doesn't always happen, but that's just the general goal of that particular channel, and that's the only rebranding I've had any desire to do. Shelby, on the other hand, we started making jokes about. Yeah, like, I don't know exactly remember how it started. It started with Rob calling you Shelby. Oh, I know it started with him, but... (laughs) But, uh... What were you saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's there. fine. It, it, it actually, I was going to let you pick it up from there. It started with Rob calling you Shelby Sherbert, and then the yeah. idea came across, which I'll let you take over now. Yeah, it's like like he started calling me Shelby Sherbert for um, whatever reason, and I guess the, the name has a uniqueness to it, which I would say, yeah, it does. Um, basically, we didn't like it. Started out really as a joke, like oh, Shelby Sherbert ice cream and stuff like that, and like. Uh, <laughs> We we would make a bunch of stupid puns, like mainly. Me, well, it started with Rob, and then I really started picking up. It's like, oh, you could be like anytime uh, something interesting happens, you could be like, I am Shelby Sherbert, and that's the scoop of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the scoop, is what it was. Yeah, it's like it makes me sound like a. 
<laughs> like I'm trying to be a shitty news channel or whatever. <laughs> yes, but it's also I still stand by the idea that even if obviously you don't have to do it, but it was it's still unique. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's like I I kind of toyed with the idea of doing it. It's like I actually had an idea for a skip if I was actually going to do it, and if I do it, it'll be fucking great. But it was um be a skit of me being on the computer looking oh yeah, at something, and this. then like somebody makes a mean comment for whatever says so like, "Oh, your videos suck." I get all depressed and sad. I see me just kind of walk out of my room, go into the uh <laughs> the kitchen. I grab up this. Like, gigantic thing of sherbet. Like, the tub ones. And then I would come in my room and stuff. You'd see me open it up. i just stare at it. i take a bite. i kind of smile a little. And then i just start stabbing the shit out of the spoon. It's getting all over the place. And just start <laughs> bashing my face into it. <laughs> and then you just see the, lo- the, the, the logo come on. Shelby Sherbert. A new channel coming near you. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the point of that it's like introductories introductories i guess like i guess the show what kind of channel it is <laughs> it's a gaming channel sort of but <laughs> sort of, it's like well your game your, your name doesn't sound gamey it's like well, well shut up yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh i, re- I remember you toying with the idea a little bit we, it was mostly just us memeing but we were like if you were going to rebrand to something, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the reason we I toyed with the idea of rebranding is be, just because of the fact that uh, the name with numbers is not very recognizable these days. Yeah, I I get what they mean when they say that. Mm-hmm. And any names that are recognizable with numbers are names that have been recognizable for years now. And even yeah. though we've been on on the internet and doing stupid stuff for years now, we don't exactly have a big following. No, not even close. <laughs> well, mostly because we're inconsistent as all fuck. That too. <laughs> so, that's where part of that problem lies. And at this point, I have probably put up almost 400 videos. Some of them are unlisted for uh, the check things out, like machinimas and stuff like that and yeah. other reasons. But for the most part, yeah, that's roughly around where I am. I don't even know where the fuck I am, to be honest with you. These days, I've transitioned more into live streaming than I have been actually making YouTube videos. Yeah. And that's just mostly because it's, first of all, it's a little more, it's easier for me personally to manage. Editing videos is something that I still do, obviously. Like, I still make clip shows and compilations, and I'm still making machinimas here and there. But for the most part, I'm not really recording Let's Plays. I'm not really recording, you know, the stuff stuff of that nature anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, I guess really that leads us into future goals and or plans, which I'll leave uh, that up to you, Zach, because I don't really necessarily have, like, any different plans enough from what I've already done. Mm -hmm. For me, um, obviously future goals is I would like to see my uh twitch channel have a little bit more of a surge of viewers i'm not talking like take me to a full-time job twitch streamer status but i'd like to see it start to grow a little bit more than it is now and it's it's started to here and there i'm, I'm starting to get more consistent viewers and that's actually something i appreciate and i appreciate them for that as well but my main goal is generally to try and grow the twitch channel up a little bit and use the youtube channel as kind of a highlight hub and uh uh, Machinima Hub, I guess, these days. I might still do edits of random video games here and there because that's just something I do. It's always fun. Yeah, and it's always fun. So, if I'm not if I'm not streaming, chances are I'm going to start recording more, and if anything happens while we're recording, I might edit those together and make a brief edit of like a one-hour video, make it turn it into a five-minute video, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is what I did with Dead Island, and those turned out good. Holy shit, yeah, did those turn out good? really good. <laughs> those actually turned out really good. As for future goals and plans with the YouTube channel, there aren't very many. Twitch is the one I would rather see take off, if anything. Mostly because I'm really heavily branding towards the Rage Roni show stuff. Yeah, which I think you're doing relatively decent at. Yay! I'm glad, I'm glad someone agrees because... I, I... Well, yeah, I mean, you're getting <laughs> viewers and stuff. It's like, like I actually 
do have more people on my Twitch thing. The problem is I don't stream uh, much for various reasons, and I could go to all those reasons. Uh, uh, just to give you a hint, there's a particular uh, person or people that like to show up a lot of my house, and it kind of puts oh, everything yeah. on hold. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I know uh, what you're talking about. It's like I don't want to do that while they're here, so that's part of the reason Like my playthroughs also take a lot to get through, but I'm trying to... I, I have always been trying to get better at getting those things out. Yeah. And uh, obviously uh, with the personal issues and, and with the house and living stuff like that, sometimes it can be difficult. To eat. Yeah. So you, Especially you, you when people just show up unexpectedly, like all the time. Yep. Yep. Honestly, I would be like, you need to get a lock on your fucking door. <laughs> I don't know if you have one or not, but I think you do. I do, but it's still, it's still the fact, though, when it'll do it, start getting ready for something, all of a sudden I hear... Knock, knock. <laughs> Dude, that's what it was like when I was still living with my parents. Every time I'm... It, it, when I'm doing nothing all fucking day, nothing, not a peep. I'll turn my game on and be like, hey, Shelby, let's do something. Hey! Zach! What are you doing? Zach! <laughs> Zach! 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 <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it, but... Also, when I went and got food, my dad would always catch me to do something with him as soon as I got food. Like, like I want to eat. I don't want my stuff cold. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to, right now I'm trying to decide what game I want to finish that I started next. Uh, which mm -hmm. I actually got, I know this wasn't something that was bombing for all. We actually got Surgeon Simulator out pretty quickly. Honestly, yeah, that we had very little issues with getting that one done. Holy crap, the Jello. The Jello. Mm. <laughs> the, the the pace we got that out is the pace we would like to see from everything from now on. Yes, that's what I would like to do. I streamed but. it. I didn't stream the last bit of it because I figured we were so close to the end of the game. I didn't want to start a whole stream just for that. Yeah. And I, I kind of wish I did because I threw a plate of Jello into a locker and oh god, it made me so mad when that I didn't get that <laughs> captured. But whatever, it don't matter. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> yeah, and like. Uh... Hold on for on this uh, cast for a while. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I think at the moment I've gotten all the big stuff out of the way. I'm sure we'll remember stuff as soon as we stop recording. We'll be like, oh, we should have talked likely, about this. Yeah, <laughs> but we can always save topics for the next time we do one of these. Yeah. So I think for now we'll go ahead and call that as the first episode of the Connection Check Podcast. Shelby, any uh, any lingering thoughts you want to quickly get out in rapid fire manner? If you need to check your facts, you got education connection. Oh, All right, let's let's just stop this right now. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, this has been the connection check with me, Gamers One Hundred and One, and my other host, Shelby. Shelby Sherbert, or the Game Six and Nine Seventy. Shelby Sherbert, working title. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, if you've liked what you've seen slash heard here, if you're not already, feel free to subscribe to our channels. Um, his the link to his channel. If you're watching this on my end, will be in the description below, and vice versa. I'm assuming, assume, assuming yeah. he, assuming yeah, he shows the same courtesy. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, you could always just forget, but I ain't gonna forget. No, I'll try not to forget either. So, <laughs> as for at your door, like I, I do. I'm certain we will edit our videos a little bit differently, but the podcast content will remain the same. So, yeah. Uh, on that note, thank you so much for watching. We both really appreciate it, and we will see you the next time we make a video because it likely won't be another one of these just yet. <laughs> but if you just listen to us for podcast content for some freaking reason. People do. So. Which, you know, some people do, but I don't think any of the people who watch us listen to us for podcast content. But yeah. but hey, if if we get any new viewers with this one, hey, welcome. We're weird, and we welcome you. So Yeah, welcome. Join us. Uh, we will see you the next time we make a video and or podcast. Yep. See you guys later. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.